Good morning and happy birthday to me, 55 today. So, um, yes, I've given away some uh, security information that I don't give away. Um, usually on the internet, on social media, I have a false birthday, um, you know, for those kind of reasons. Um, you might think that the most significant meeting I've been at was the hashtag Howling Hustings. Um, there's a wonderful blog post, controversial, um, called um, The Howling at the Hastings Hustings. I would recommend that you listen to that. Please remind me to put the link to it below. Um, not listen to it, but read it. Sorry, haven't had much sleep. There's been too much going on. I think that what we need to talk about as regards polarisation in politics is too important. Um, more important than sleep today. Um, there are things that, that need to be said in a timely way, in my humble opinion. So, the most important meeting I've ever attended in Hastings was organised by Jess Steele. In fact, I went to two important meetings organised by Jess Steele that followed on from each other. The first was called Changing Hastings, and this was about how much the cost of living, cost of renting in Hastings has gone up compared to um, the earnings, the average earnings, um, etc. So m there were very few tenants at the meeting. Uh, I think a major concern of the people who were at the meeting was actually the changing Hastings aspect of the Airbnb. Now I'm partly responsible for Airbnb. I was recognised as um, years ahead of my time in prefiguring the low carbon economy in which things were shared more fully. This was the think tank uh, forum for a future um, back in the 2000s uh, in the noughties that, that, that recognised my work, uh, some of which went into freelander.org. I have worked with um, think tanks and had funding from um, a, a major think tank called the National Endowment for Science Technology in, the Art, Technology in the Arts after winning the Social Innovation Camp Award. My team came up with the best idea. Um, by idea, I mean um, website or mobile app um, to reduce youth offending and youth custody. And this was judged by the Youth Justice Board, by the Police uh, Improvement Agency, by the Prison Reform Trust and by Major Housing. Association and I moved to Hastings in order to trial the, the project. Uh, um, at that time, under the name peoplesjustice.org.uk, I um, published in the Hastings Observer a letter uh, which I thought had was brilliantly titled by whoever was in charge of putting the title on top of the leading letter um, of that edition in 2011, spring 2011. It was um, entitled by them uh, what I why we sorry we must act if we want justice the hashtag Hastings justice will take you all sorts of places uh, as to what is justice and what is our, our, our role in it and the way in which I tell uh, whatever it is I tell on these films I throw out links here there and everywhere I recognize that it's difficult to follow the narrative thread so I'm saying that changing Hastings was an important meeting and I'm saying that because um, I got to hear a speaker, a very effective speaker, namesake Paul, um, though I don't think that accounts for his speaking ability. Uh, I was booed off the stage that, that day by the way um, because it was not seen as an appropriate venue for the um, independent candidate to, uh, to talk. I do think it's interesting given um, the supposed general belief in democracy, how little uh, people cared to make sure they had read the leaflets of all the major candidates, sorry, of all the candidates, all four of us, before voting uh, in the general election. So I believe that democracy is about informed consent, and I would even dare to say that where someone is not informed, um, there should be a question 
over their over their vote. That said, they didn't want to be informed about whatever it was um, the independent candidate was attempting to mediate that night. So um, I, I, I gave way instantly, uh, unlike when they tried to boo Sally Ann Hart down um, at the Hastings Hustings in relation to disability and the minimum wage. I stepped in and I said what I, what I knew would be unpopular with that audience and I stood up for the dignity of living. Um, whereas the audience was standing up for um, the dignity of the living wage and Sally Ann Hart was standing up for the dignity of work. It was all massively misrepresented in the media and hence I've got the book coming out um, before too long, The Myth of the Heartless Tory. Um, and unfortunately that led to the Sally Ann, that was one of the factors leading to hashtag Sally Ann Hart death threat. But we'll come there in, in due course as we just recognise what role we have played in any of the local polarisations. ACORN, Tenants Association, amazing idea. I, I signed up my company to uh, be a supporter of, of ACORN, a main company, Mediation Support Limited, a supporter of ACORN um, Tenants Union, which originated in Brighton and like many other things, like the naked bike ride, is has come over to Hastings and the increased property prices and the success of green candidates. I think we need to disentangle um, hashtag Brightonification and look at what things we value about what's come from Brighton and um, oh, art galleries, um, artists, um, a, and, an, and the downside of that is an enclave that doesn't engage in the life of Hollington for example. Um, so there's loads of discussions to have about basically how to make sure that um, what comes from Brighton is inclusive. And by inclusive, I mean very specifically, this is a very strange definition of inclusive probably, likely to lead to the right green candidate getting elected in the general election 2023 or a major swing in that direction because Labour are a losing force. As Tony Blair so brilliantly put it in the New Statesman recently, um, Corbyn was um, radical but not sensible and Starmer is sensible but not radical. So the Greens are taking up the slack uh, from the lack of uh, credible Labour opposition and the Labour um, Supporters are up in arms um, in the Hastings borough at the very least after the general, uh, not sorry, the local elections um, in which the local elections of 2021 saw um, green candidates like a friend of mine in the Or constituency um, deprive them as they saw it of the seat that could have been theirs. They kind of presume that green votes are theirs by the notion of this progressive alternative to the Tories. I'm sorry, uh, the word progressive breaks down very quickly when you look at it closely. Um, so, <coughs> yeah, the Tories got in in, in awe. Um, and Gary, Rolf, who I've known a number of years, perhaps friend is too strong a, strong a word, but um, we have sat together at the theatre and at Green Party meetings. Um, anyhow, he got 200, 205 votes um, and I warned him that he was heading for abuse from um, the aggrieved Labour um, enclave. I really think that if my independent candidature has achieved one thing uh, locally it shows that a green, a renegade green and I'm a green Brexiteer uh, for example because that was the Green Party I fell in love with in 19. Uh, 90, a, a Green Party that wanted to leave um, the EU um, until it was significantly reformed. And um, so, yeah, people like me, renegade Greens, will stand if the Green Party doesn't stand. And members will be disappointed if the party that they've supported does not field candidates. So, um, in creating a so called progressive alliance, um, the main losers have been the Green Party, as I see it, um, by um, letting 
Labour candidates stand un, unopposed by the, by the Greens. It's important for Greens to get through this difficult phase whereby, yes, in some wards, um, the Conservatives will win because Labour and Green have stood. Um, but is that the Greens' responsibility? You could equally say it's the Labour's responsibility to stand down in many, many locations. Um, I've said more than I intended to about those themes and I haven't really got into um, what the upshot of the changing Hastings um, event, which I would recommend you follow that hashtag changing Hastings and get to the film and see um, not only the ACORN Union um, spokesperson Paul from Brighton but also a special film made about the changing property scene in Hastings and um, the various comments and uh, lead taken by Jess Steele, an active uh, individual in many fields um, in relation to the generation of Hastings and St Leonard's, but unfortunately with a chip on her shoulder about the pier that meant it, instead of coming up with a strategy for influence in, in winning back the pier, and I do have a Twitter stream about winning back the pier in the year 2066 at WPier 2066, instead of coming up with a strategy of influence to win back con, um, control of the pier or, or, or to win influence in the pier, it became a straight contest to try and stop the the owner having the rightful legal owner having having um, control of the pier um, just because you know many of us had put in a lot of time and energy uh, and money um, into um, a community owned pier project that folded so um, bitter grapes um, are there amongst some activists in town um, Jess organised a training event from ACORN and the key, I, I was on the train down from Canterbury at Rye, it was clear that the train was going to take a significant pause before going further so to get to the training on time £25 was the cost of the taxi on a Sunday from Rye to um, Hastings but the event took, uh, I got to the event on time and at first I was disappointed because right at the centre of the training sheet was the word polarise. It said your advice when you have a dispute with your landlord is to polarise. If any of you are landlords, um, do you like it when your tenants polarise? And so when we get on to talking about things like southern water, do you think that polarising with them is the right approach? I don't. I believe the right approach is to start with what I did that led to. Uh, one of my more popular films is what I did that led to Hastings Pier Fire. But what I did that led to, and then um, a new hashtag, Bulverhide Sewage, and hashtag episode. Um, that I think is the key thinking ground. I would like people to reflect on what they did that led to the Bulverhide sewage episode and from there we can move forward.